And now we're going to chat about some just fantastic eBay findings that I've had this week. Um, These are listings, completed listings that are so cool, so unique, and honestly gives me some, best way to put it, it gives me some hope that there is still spec room in the marketplace. You know, some of these books, I'm like, damn, they're selling for that cheap. That's really cool. Oh, people aren't really throwing that much money down on all of these keys. I feel like maybe I should save this to my favorite search, like my favorite, sa- you know, my save search on eBay in case something comes up. And I want to talk about them. These are things that sold. This first thing is not a comic book, but I have to bring it to your attention. Right now, what we're looking at is a listing that completed for $170, Jeff. This is the Spider-Man utility belt, all right? This is 44 years old, and what we're looking at is a full, like, you know, it's like the tools that Spider-Man would use, and you can dress up to a degree if you have the suit in its entirety. And what we're looking at is a box that has a utility belt, a walkie-talkie, that clearly wouldn't have like had any functionality back then. A watch, but then take a look at this right here. That right there is a wristband. Like what we're looking at right now, Comic Fan for our audio listeners, is a wristband that has a red rope at the you know attached to it, and then what looks like a metal end of a bungee hook. Like you know, like a hook, like you know that you would need for a bungee, like a carabiner. Yeah, like a carabiner, like this right here is metal and it's rusting because it's been, you know, in here for so long. So imagine a kid back in the day putting this hook on one end of something and then tying it to their wrist and then running around, probably trying to hoist themselves up with this rope on a tree and likely hurting themselves, possibly even having this metal hook, you know, being ricocheted back to them as it was pulled back. Like, oh my goodness, this is a dangerous item, but one that sold for 170 bucks. I mean, look what it says. It says power web, communicator. All right, you know. Walkie talkie. Minus the communication. A grapple. So that's exactly what it is. It's a grapple. Like, I'm looking at the cord itself. Like, that thing can't support more than freaking 10 pounds. So a child trying to grapple something. I guess imagine a child throwing this at their sibling, you know, like the end of the hook trying to catch them. And that's, it looks like a metal hook. <laughs> it's it's too, freaking crazy. Stop grappling your sister. Just stop grappling it. Okay. So here's another book that honestly, this kind of looks like a Mineola cover. I could be wrong, but that negative space, those eyes, we have Modoc head games issue. Number one, have you seen the Modoc show? I've seen commercials for it. Is it out? Yeah, it's out. It's on Hulu. You can see it. It's, it's kind of got like that robot chicken vibe. I, I enjoy it. It's not my thing, really. I'm not, I'm not like up every week. You know, granted, I think all the, the whole season has been released on Hulu, so it doesn't really matter. But like, I'm not up like I was with uh, Invincible or The Boys. Like, I'm watching those shows midnight before. I got to see it. I'm thinking about it all week. Modoc's a fun one to kind of throw on. Because it's kind of slapstick humor, you know. But I love Modoc. I think it's a, a hilarious narrative. Well, Modoc Head Games number one is the first featured time in comic books where Modoc's family is showcased, and it's actually in a flashback. This one right here goes for under three dollars. This is a dollar bin book, and considering that we have characters on screen, the Modoc family that's really been showcased. People don't know Modoc. People who know Modoc now know him as part of this animation. It's similar to WandaVision. You know, people are going to forever associate Vision, Scarlet Witch, and the twins with that narrative that took place, the groundbreaking show. And even the vision from the Tom King run was spiking to no end because of characters just like this that were just integrated because 
yeah, he has a family. And so this is kind of the closest thing we have to a family narrative. So I just think this is a cool one. Seeing this go for a buck, I got to figure out who did this cover. Let me know in the comments section. We'll send you a no prize comic fam um, because you know what? I think this is just a cool book that goes for cheap. Okay. Now I do have some books on here that I know you're going to recognize Jeff and we'll get to those in a second, but this one also stopped me in my tracks this week. This went for a dollar, okay? Technically, it went for like $10 because someone bought it from Canada. Now, this one right here is uh, a comic book created by Roman Dirge. And Roman is the creator of Lenore. Lenore was optioned and has ties to Neil Gaiman right now. And it's likely going to happen when Neil Gaiman's name is involved. So when I stumbled upon this comic that I'd never seen, I couldn't help but like get flashbacks to when I go to conventions or half price books or if I'm on the hunt and I see something I've never seen before and I just want to own it because it's weird. What we're looking at is a comic book. It looks like an ash can. The cat with the really big head. This cat's head is being suspended like it's a freaking dolly painting with elephants and horses. The head has to have stilts holding it up and there's actually a bird living on the top. It's very strange. And for whatever reason, I wanted to show it to the community. What's up? What do you think about this comic, Jeff? Like, how does it make you feel? <laughs> As an owner of two cats, it's intriguing because I don't understand where the story can go with it. But <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that comic either. I've seen Lenore, uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, you know, all through that, that time frame. But uh, the cat with the really big head, yeah, I've never seen it. But... Uh, I don't know. If you had one here, I'd flip through it, man. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's got to read it, right? Okay, next on eBay. You know I had to bring some gold on the mic. I got to hear your thoughts about this. We had a Submariner Comics issue number one. Hit eBay. Come and go. A 6.5. What do we have on this cover here? Yeah, so this is Submariner Comics number one, like you mentioned, 1941. Uh, Submariner taking out a, a Nazi boat of soldiers here. And then you have the angel here at the bottom. And which is actually, a, I think the angel is Marvel's longest running, one of the longest running heroes from in Marvel Mystery Comics. And went up from like issue, God, I think one to 74 almost, I think longer than anybody else. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. little fun fact. Um, it's a cool book. Um, how much did this thing sell for? So the uh, buy, the best offer price um, is confirmed at $30,000 for a 6.5. Okay, okay. How does that feel to you? That's a tough one. You know, this book is interesting. I like the book because it's uh, the first time he's in his own title. But if you really look at the history of this character, I mean, he appeared in a giveaway at a theater. Yeah, first. Motion Picture Funnies. Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number one. Yeah. Allegedly is maybe nine in existence. So okay. cool, man. I would love to see Possibly it. never even distributed. Yeah, okay. rumors. Rumors. And then first appeared in Marvel Comics one. Huge key, obviously. But his first cover appearance was Marvel Mystery Comics 4, which is a hugely traded comic book, extremely expensive. I think we just had like a below a 2.0 with brittle pages, I believe, just sell a couple about a couple months ago for 20K. Wow. That's a huge number. Okay. And that also has, I think, the second appearance of ever of a swastika on a comic book cover. Oh, wow. Crazy stuff. Yeah. And then his third cover, or really second cover appearance, is Marvel Mystery Comics 9, which is like him and Human Torch battling. It's a three-part story. Classic. Starts in 8, and I think it ends in 11. So I think it's 8, 9, and then the 11th issue, I believe. Um, a very expensive book, too. But Submariner 1 is like his 20th, 30th, 20th plus appearance somewhere along the line. He appeared in Human Torch 1 before that even. So it's a cool book because it's his first title. But outside of that, if you think about his cover appearances. He's been around for a while. He's been around for a while. $30,000, I get it. I think it's those collectors who are getting into the hobby, wanting a Submariner, and they think Submariner 1 is the book. It has been, I think, in my opinion, possibly undervalued and underappreciated for a while. It's starting to gain momentum because a, it's Submariner, and it's a Golden Age book that is available, and it's more easily available than Marvel Mystery Comics 4, which is extremely difficult Marvel Mystery Comics 9 also. So for a key to get into that's a number one with a major hero like that, it might not be a terrible price. I know a lot of people have been holding very firm on their prices for years on this book, waiting for 
their comeuppance. So this might have been that sale for them. Well, I'll tell you, it was listed for $40,000. So that was a $10,000 discount and something to consider. You know, if you're dealing with these really high-end books, it's worth trying to negotiate if the seller is up to it. I would love a copy of this book. It's very action one feel. Instead of crashing the rock, you know, the car into the rock, it feels like he's crushing this boat in the same angle down. So it feels like that to me, you know, it's a great image. All right, next book on the list that we got to chat about that sold on eBay recently is a classic horror cover. One of the most memorable covers, one of the best. It sold for $7,945 after 48 bids. Chamber of Chills 19. What are we looking at for the audio fam? See, this is the classic Lee Elias cover. All right, this was even used by the Misfits in their you know, 1984 single, Die, Die, My Darling. Danzig loves comic books, so you know that was his doing. Yeah, he's a fan. And, you know, it's funny. They just sold the original art to this last year. Did they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I can't remember what it went for. It's either 175 or 275 thousand. Either way, it felt soft for as important as this book is when you think about it. Regardless, as classic as it gets, it's just a, look, at the, look what it says on here. It says, Here's looking at you, darling, on our happy anniversary. Yeah. So we have this skeleton hand holding this champagne glass, from what I understand is what it is. And through the reflection of the champagne is a skeleton face of this beautiful, sultry-like gal smoking a cigarette. And like half of her face is the skull. Half of it is her normal beauty being showcased with her blonde, that, that yellow. It, it just... It pops through the screen, and we're talking about a comic book that came out in 1953. Between VG in fine condition, smoking that cigar like a badass, like Constantine back in the day. Don't smoke, kids, but damn, she looks good. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's here teasing death. You know, that's kind of what it's feeling like. So it's, it's, there's something about this cover that you can't help but be attracted to as a collector or a non-collector. And I have no idea what this book sold for. So tell me, hit me with it. And it's raw. It's not even great. Oh, yeah, 7,945 bucks. And it was graded as a what? A VG fine, you said? VG fine, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't grade that as a VG fine either. So that's a raw book, yeah? Yep. So looking at that book, I'd say it's maybe a VG. Okay. So what what do you think? Do you feel like that's a, a that, that price is about right? Or maybe it may have been a little, little high because of the market? <sighs> I mean... It's one of those books you just, any giving auction, you never know when it's going to spike. Um, I think if you wanted that book, you should be happy you got it at VG for that price. Just be happy. Enjoy it. Give or take another 1000 or 1500 Who really cares at this point? And you may not see one for quite a while. Did I say it was a cigar or a cigarette? She's smoking a cigarette. I just want to make sure I said it right. She's definitely not, definitely not smoking a cigar. Definitely not um, experiencing the type of torture and... And just, just terribleness that this next fellow is experiencing. Oh my goodness! This this cover right here is probably one of the best examples of why a code was needed at the time. We're talking about a sale of twenty six hundred dollars for a uh, a poured a good looking copy of Black Cat number fifty. Talk about this outstanding, disturbing memorable cover shocking horror radiates from white heat the radium yeah this is what happens when you smoke a radium cigarette by the way your face will melt so this is another you know glorious cover by lee elias who's just absolute legend in in the horror cover industry and it's also by harvey both those titles were by harvey publications and there these books aren't really scarce or rare there's quite a few i mean i can assume there's probably around 80 or so of these already graded alone and probably almost 100 of the Chamber of Chills 19. So if you think about that in the grand scheme of it, it's not that scarce. But it doesn't mean it's not in demand and wanted. For me, if I wanted to buy this book, it's a great filler copy. But ultimately, it's one of those things with such a striking image, you want to have it appear better. Okay, so I can tell looking at this, it's it's not bad. The main image area is there. So it's it's probably a good pickup for somebody at that price point because there's always going to be that baseline. Right. You know, when you get into low grade, you still have to pay your minimums to get your book. So whoever got this book, congrats on adding it to your collection and uh, enjoy the face melting picture. We'll leave you with this spec book. 
I still feel like it's undervalued. We know that that Satana is coming. We know that we're going to see uh, Black Adam being played by The Rock, debuting Dr. Fate, Cyclone, Adam Smasher, and Hawkman. I'm looking at a Hawkman issue number four, graded at 8.0. First appearance of Zatanna. This book, considering the heights of other books, we're talking about Ultimate Fallout that came out in 2011 at a 9.8 that has sold for more money than an 8.0 first Zatanna that came out in 1964. This comic at auction after 30 bids hit $2,500. That doesn't seem right. I think that there is so much room on this book, especially lower grade copies. It's 100% right. You guys tell you why it's right? Because it's DC. Yeah. And DC can't do anything right <laughs> with their characters. So the price is right. You know how many great keys DC has that don't sell for poop? It's Quite a, lot, a few. Dude, Dark, dude Dark Side first appearance will go for like 4K. Okay, at a 9.8. Like, we're talking, like, Forever People, issue number one, Jack Kirby, shout out. First appearance of Thanos in Iron Man 55 broke 20K in the last week for a 9.8. Like, the, I think it was, like, $24,000, if I recall correctly. That much? Yeah, man. It, it's huge numbers. And we're not going to see Thanos appear in any way that's going to push spec towards him. His time, you know... As far as like the mainstream, you know, his 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 story was told. His biggest story was told. And we know Dark Side is coming. You know, we know that he is a big bad that they're going to attempt to integrate if they do anything uh, based off of the last JLA movie again, which who knows, you know, with, with what happened with that very movie, there's a lot of unknowns. But man, it is selling for upwards of five times less than a Marvel book that really is only selling because of how much that character has peaked in society. Well, they built Marvel built a culture, okay, of collectors and interest in their characters. DC cannot get traction in that. They cannot build a culture. They know how to destroy a culture very, very well. Okay, so that's what's happening. You look at Brave and the Bull 28, okay, for Spirits of the Justice League. You look at Showcase 22 for Silver Age Green Lantern. These books are five to six years older then the first appearance of FF, first appearance of Spider-Man. And those books are selling five times more than their counterpart for what God-given reason other than DC cannot make it work. It's as black and white as it gets. You want to get into comics? You want to collect cool keys? Go collect DC. Comic fan, what value. do you think? We got to hear your thoughts about this in the comment section below. Do you feel like some of the stuff is undervalued? We do. 